a very good evening to all of you today we'll discuss ecosystem in detail now see we get to see a collection of organisms in our ecosystem this includes birds animals the entire environment with plants its photosynthesizing potential then deep down into the oceanic bodies everywhere we get to see existence of life and this entire biotic as well as abiotic community together form the ecosystem so if we define ecosystem we can say that an ecosystem is an assemblage of all the organisms and the physical environment with which they interact right these biotic and abiotic components are linked together through nutrient cycles and energy flows so in simpler words we can say that an ecosystem is a region with a specific and recognizable landscape uh, landscape form such as say forest grassland wetland coastal areas desert all these okay now see the nature of the ecosystem is based on it uh, geographical features like mountains plains rivers seas islands all these things now if the ecosystem builds up near uh, or or builds up in a terrestrial region inside a forest we'll call it a forest ecosystem if it develops in a grassland we call it a grassland ecosystem if it is in the water we call it aquatic ecosystem now this aquatic ecosystem also has got various types like marine ecosystem fresh water ecosystem that means river and ecosystem pond ecosystem lake ecosystem various types are found okay and we must remember that it is controlled by climatic conditions like amount of sunlight temperature and rainfall in that particular region so these such points has to be kept in mind the geographical climatic and soil characteristic form it non living that is abiotic component because these are non living right other than the non living ones whatever is living they together form the biotic community in the ecosystem now these features create conditions that support a community of plants and animals that evolution has produced to live in these specific conditions so this is what is our ecosystem see in ecosystem what we get to see is there is a continuous flow of energy this is something very interesting and very important as well we get to see flow of energy look into this picture see here what do we get to see what does this say energy flow and trophic levels see sun is the ultimate source of energy on earth this is the ultimate source of energy we all know this now from this source the this energy is hitting on the surface of the earth this energy is first being utilized by the producers or plants plants use this energy to manufacture food this energy is passed on to the next trophic level which is consumer now this consumer can be of various types primary consumer secondary consumer and tertiary consumer now each successive level gives you a series of heat loss the energy that is captured by the producer is utilized into making food now this 
plant when is being consumed by the consumer gets some energy the consumer is getting energy through this consumption process so what is happening energy is being transferred from the producer to the consumer and in this way certain part of energy is lost in the form of heat now when this consumer is being consumed by another consumer which is known as secondary consumer in this process also we see certain amount of energy getting lost in the form of heat now again the cycle continues the chain continues the secondary consumer is also consumed by another one which is called tertiary consumer now this tertiary consumer is also gaining some energy from the snake which is the which was the secondary consumer and when this transformation or when this transfer of energy was occurring what was happening then there was certain amount of energy loss right now this energy loss was noted to be a 10% loss per trophic level okay you don't need to know this in detail just know that 10% of heat is lost at every uh at successive trophic levels during energy flow right see and always remember one very important point that is energy flow is unidirectional that means what it is happening in one direction only fine from the sun this is the sun you know from the sun the energy is hitting the earth coming to the earth from here producers that means producers are growing here only these are trees producers are growing here itself from here consumer and from here decomposer the reverse is not possible fine see here energy enters the system through photosynthesis and is incorporated into plant tissue we all know this that this is your sun the ultimate source of energy and heat on earth and then this is incorporated or this gets incorporated into the plant tissue and the plants photosynthesize with this energy and this is how the energy gets transferred from producer to the last member of the trophic level that i mean the pyramid that is decomposer and this is how energy transformation occurs in one single direction see here what does it say an ecosystem is defined as a community of life forms in occurrence with non living components interacting with each other you think of yourself first forget about all um, organisms plants all those stuff you are an individual correct you are an individual now this individual is not a self sufficient individual we are dependent on someone if if you are a vegetarian you are dependent on plant based diet if you are a non vegetarian you are dependent on both plants as well as animal based diet correct plants as well as animal based diet are your source of energy and this plants are growing or not whether these plants are giving you product or not depends on what 
depends on the climatic condition, depends on rain, sunlight, soil characters, all these things. If there is not enough nutrients in the soil, if there is not enough soil, if there is no uh, proper water, that is uh, rainfall or anything like that, then there is no proper growth of plant. That means some member of the ecosystem will found uh, will be found to be you know non functional or weakly functioning understanding so an ecosystem is a community where we get to see correlation or interaction among different components whether living or non living fine now see, if we talk about the structure of an ecosystem, the ecosystem is made up of two major components. Hmm? It is made up of two major components. What are they? The biotic component and the abiotic component. The biotic from the word you can understand, it comprises of living organism and this comprises of non-living organisms. Clear? Biotic components means living organisms. See here in this blue colored picture. Biotic means living thing. Abiotic ones are non-living thing. Okay. So the structure of an ecosystem can be split into two main components namely biotic factors and abiotic factors. The biotic and abiotic components are interrelated in the ecosystem. It is an open system where the energy and the components of uh, components can flow throughout the boundaries. Clear? Now see, this gives you a brief account of biotic and abiotic factors in an ecosystem. Abiotic factors are limited like air, salinity, soil. Soil along with its soil, uh, along with the nu nutrients. Now, soil can have two parts to it. It can have its own abiotic components. It can have its own biotic components as well. The living organisms that are living in the soil, they comprise of the biotic community in the soil and the nutrients that are there in the soil, the mineral salts and all those stuff, they constitute the abiotic components of the soil. Other than that, you have light, temperature, water, minerals, hydrogen ion concentration, humidity, everything. Coming to biotic components, in biotic components, you have the plants, which are the producers, the animals, which are the consumers, then the microorganisms, which are the decomposers. If you see here, you see the plants here. The plants are, are producers. Then the animals are the consumers. Then we have the bacteria as our decomposers. Right? Decomposers, consumers, and producers. Fine. So these two group of components make up our entire ecosystem. One is incomplete with the other. An ecosystem cannot be said complete if it only has got abiotic factors or if it only has got biotic factors to it. We cannot say that it is complete. Now look at this. This is what we were just now discussing. This is how this is how the things happen in an ecosystem. The energy is captured by the producers here. Okay. They photosynthesize and they make photosynthate the plants here are consumed or the plant products are consumed by the primary consumer. The primary consumers 
are consumed by secondary consumer and the secondary consumers are consumed by tertiary consumers. And when these ter tertiary consumers die, their dead, dead bodies are decomposed by decomposers, right? And at every level, there is some amount of energy loss. At every level, we get to see some amount of energy loss. You see here, this arrow here denotes energy loss. At every level, there is some amount of energy loss, which is 10% loss of energy. And this was given to us by Lindemann, a scientist name as Lindemann. Okay. Now see here, coming to each component of the ecosystem. Now in the next part, we'll discuss these things. You know, uh, these three topics which are there, no? Producers, consumers and These are the three topics from the biotic component which we are going to discuss in details now. First, so starting our discussion with producers. Okay. Starting our talk with producers. All right. See, producers are the lowest trophic level in any food chain. See here. Producers are here. Producers are the lowermost trophic members. Hmm? They are at the lowest trophic level of any food chain. They are autotrophs. Autotrophs means what? They are not dependent on anyone for manufacturing of food. They can prepare their own food. Okay, that means they make their own food. Yes, producers are typically plants, but they can also be organisms like phytoplankton. There are certain organisms called phytoplankton, hmm, which are known to have, which are known to have uh, chlorophyll. And when they are known to have chlorophyll means what? They can, it is not pictured here, so I'm cancelling this. They are known to have chlorophyll means they can perform photosynthesis. Okay, come here. Through either photosynthesis, they can manufacture food through either photosynthesis by using energy from the sun or by chemosynthesis using chemical energy. Okay. Producers convert inorganic molecules into organic forms that is usable by higher trophic levels. This is the higher trophic level. See, producer is the lowermost, then the higher trophic level is primary consumer, then secondary consumer, then tertiary consumer. Next, coming to consumers. Fine. In consumer, we have three different types of consumers. Yes, we have three different types of consumers. Primary, secondary, tertiary. Primary belongs to the level just above the producer. So primary consumers are always herbivores because they consume plants as they rely on producers for food. Hmm, that means they consume plants only. Fine. The secondary, in, you know the examples, many examples you know. Hmm? Cow, rabbit, goat, etc. etc. You know many examples. Secondary consumer means what? Consumer that depends on primary consumer for their energy. Right? Now these little animals like rabbits and all, they are consumed by snakes. So snake becomes a secondary consumer. Now coming to tertiary consumer. Now these snakes are also, there, are, there is someone 
who is there for consuming the snake not only the snake see this uh, there are plenty other secondary consumers even we can become sometimes secondary consumer many other like if a lion is consuming this goat then that lion becomes a secondary consumer correct now coming to tertiary consumer what are tertiary consumer tertiary consumers are organisms that depend on the secondary consumers for food tertiary consumers can be carnivores or omnivores see both these secondary as well as tertiary consumers can be both either uh, i mean they can be carnivores only or they can be carnivores as well as herbivores and that is omnivores hmm? coming to quaternary ones Consu quaternary consumers are present in some food chain not always you'll not get it everywhere these organisms prey on tertiary consumers now sometimes these tertiary consumers are also preyed on that means they are also killed by someone and eaten by them they are usually at the top of the food chain as they have no natural predators normally quaternary uh, consumers are not consumed by anyone they are the last one to dominate in that uh, food chain they occupy the topmost position and after their death their dead bodies are only decomposed by the decomposers clear now coming to decomposers decomposers are what decomposers are generally microorganisms generally but of course macroorganisms are also present generally these are microorganisms okay that generally these are microorganisms that break down the complex organic compounds present in the dead plants and animals and their products and those organic matters are broken into simpler smaller compounds which are returned back to the soil now decomposers play an extremely important role in the ecosystem rather we can say that a de uh, an ecosystem is handicapped without decomposers though they are micro we cannot see them though they are too tiny yet they are indispensable indispensable means you cannot do without it a decomposer is an organism be it a fungi a bacteria or little bigger sized ones that is worms insects whatever it is they are extremely important because the dead bodies of the animals plants or all other living organisms needs to be broken down needs to be decomposed and once that gets decomposed into smaller particles those smaller particles are what those are nutrient rich particles that are utilized by the soil that are utilized by the plant that those are returned to the soil those are returned to the soil and that is the nutrient which the soil gets so if there is no decomposer there is no nutrient in the soil understood that is why decomposers are so very important without decomposers we cannot think of the existence of ecosystem these are all various categories of decomposers now coming to food chain what is a food chain food the definition of a food chain or you know definition wise a food chain is very simple to learn concept wise also food chain is very simple so food chain is what it is a linear relationship it is a linear sequence of organisms through which nutrients and energy pass as one organism eats another a linear relationship develops like 
the plants are manufacturing food that food that plant is now being eaten by a rabbit a rabbit is being consumed by um a snake a snake is being consumed by an eagle an eagle can also be consumed by another bigger animal which is the quaternary one so this relationship that exists between the different organisms of a tropic um, of different organisms belonging to different tropic levels in an ecosystem is a food chain so in a food chain each organism occupies a different tropic level defined by how many energy transfers separate it from the basic input of the chain so in that way it is quite simple it is just a linear relationship that that correlate or that gives us a picture how different organisms are related in an ecosystem see what's food web what's food web food web consists of all the food chain in a single ecosystem now we can talk about different types of food chains okay it can be a plant based food chain it can be an animal based food chain now all the food chain taken together gives you a food web now different members of different food chains are also connected to one another different members of different food chains say a herbivorous food chain a carnivorous food chain an omnivorous food chain different different types of food chains are existing in the ecosystem now if you study if you take a deeper look if you take a closer look you will see that these food chains are intricately related to one another each of these food chains are intricately related to one another that means what the it may be the herbivorous food chain is very well connected or related to the carnivorous food chain now this carnivorous food chain in some way is related to the decomposer food chain so this interrelation the connection between different food chain is is what is known as food web so a food web is the natural interconnection of food chains and a graphical representation of what eats and what eats what in an ecological community fine right? so another name for food web is consumer resource system clear so this was our basic topic of uh, discussion today other than this we'll briefly discuss about the functions of ecosystem which are very important other than that you will have some case studies in your syllabus where you need to know about grassland ecosystem forest ecosystem fine those things students are meant to do but still i will share some study material with you today itself in the group fine so your this unit is over though it is meant for student analysis student work but still i'll help you out in that part also i'll give you the matter you just go through it and see whether you understand it nicely or not fine now coming to the functional side of ecosystem what function does it render it it renders multiple functions that is why we are so concerned about it right it regulates essential ecological processes supports life system and renders stability if there is no stability in the ecosystem then there is no life correct everything should be in a balanced condition there should be some amount of equilibrium otherwise there is no possibility of life on earth fine it is so this uh, function is extremely important next is what it is also responsible for cycling 
of nutrients between biotic and abiotic components. That means what? The plants are absorbing nutrients from the soil. That means biotic component is taking nutrients from the abiotic component, growing into a big tree, consumed by the consumer, then dying. Then their body part is decomposed by decomposer and again the organic nutrients are transferred back to the soil. See how they are related in a cyclic pattern. Hmm? Next is what? It maintains a balance among the various trophic levels in ecosystem. It maintains balance between various trophic levels in the ecosystem. Fine. Yes, now another last point to be taken into consideration is that since it is so very important, we need to conserve it. Ecosystem conservation considers entire communities of species as well as their interactions with the physical environment. And remember, it also aims to develop Integrated plants involving wildlife, physical resources and sustainable use. So conservation of ecosystem is a must. If we don't know how to conserve ecosystem, we are really at extreme risk. Hmm. You see, environmental conservation protects wildlife and it promotes biodiversity. As I was discussing that day in class, you must have heard that biodiversity is the price of life. Without biodiversity, there is no life again. So maintaining a healthy and functional ecosystem helps prevent the extinction of certain animal species, not only animal species, certain plant species, rather, we should say certain organisms. And if the environment is destroyed, the, the animals and plants are forced out of their habitat. Major, majorly, we can see that animals are forced out of their habitat. And just the other day, I was listening to the news. It was telling that in Bangalore, in Whitefield area, a leopard was found. Why did the leopard uh, come there, you think? It has got no work in its life. Has it come to see how Whitefield looks like? Not at all. Because we are encroaching into their habitat, we are destroying jungles, we are destroying forests. They are coming out and they, they are not coming to see our faces. We are not so beautiful. They are not coming to do that. They are coming to find out a secure shelter, which we are already destroying every day. Hmm. So we are actually making it hard for them to survive elsewhere. That is why, you know, conservation of ecosystem is so very essential. If there is no conservation, there is no life. Hmm. Okay, so this is how we finish our discussion on ecosystem. Please go through the case studies nicely. Probable questions from these portions are quickly note down the question. Definitions of food chain and food web. Definition of an ecosystem. Brief note on forest, aquatic, all these ecosystems can come, grassland ecosystems. Try to study these topics nicely. And of course, write a brief note on biotic and abiotic components of an ecosystem is a very favorite question. In different exams, you get to see these questions. So please try to Go deeper into the topic and understand the concept more than mugging it up. Hmm? So, till then, thank you for joining here in the session. I hope you have I hope you have enjoyed the session. And of course, we are looking forward to organize some other sessions some other day.
since we are not getting an opportunity to show these presentations in the class there, the thought of uh, arranging this for you. Okay, till then. Till then, goodbye.